that very last part is probably my favorite part is your thought process on it being they're not going to give up what you and your wife are giving up to get where they want to go. Um, exactly. So with that sacrifice, Kirby, for you, what kind of sacrifices are you focusing on outside of, of course, you know, the holidays thing? Um, but what sacrifices are you making to continue to improve and develop on your side of it? Well, now it's a little bit different. Um, like where Alex is at now is where probably I started off years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, I gave up a lot. I mean, it was it was bad in the house. Uh, we was unscrewing light bulbs to keep the electricity down. Um, <laughs> Great Jesus! But now, yeah, yeah, it was it was bad. It was like I said, I learned from being broke. But right. um, but now it's more. I have I have uh, quite a few units now. I own businesses, commercial property, and things like that. And but still, me and my family. And then so, like I said, when we was going through that uh, time when we was super broke mm -hmm. and I went through the Dave Ramsey book and I wanted to do more than what Dave Ramsey said. I know a lot of people say Dave Ramsey is hard, but I said we're going to live on 20 percent of our income and save 80 percent. Mm. Still to this day, still to this day, we live on 20 percent of our income and save 80 percent. It's just now the 20 percent is just way bigger than it was back then right. when uh, we were broke. But that's that's the sacrifice that we make. But yeah, 80 percent. And now, so it's, it really don't even feel like a sacrifice for us because my 80% might be the next man's hundred percent. So it's right. not a huge sacrifice, but that's, that's what we do. So do you think now, was that something that you would advise somebody to start out with, or would that be something that you would kind of tell them, Hey, that's an advanced level skill start here. And then where would they start? If you say and start here? Well, I, I believe the philosophy at least say, you know, live off 60%, save 40%. But right. everybody think it's all about, oh, I got to cut my expenses to get there. How about make more money to get there? Do a side mm -hmm. job. You know, you work your nine to five, but get another side job, a side hustle, you know, sell stuff online or something like that to increase your income. So that 60% will still be a nice chunk of change so you can live off of, so you're not sacrificing unscrewing light bulbs like I was, things like that. And, uh, and then you can go on, but everybody always just think of cut, 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 but right. make more, it could still uh, give you the same outcome. Okay, okay. So Alex, what would you say is the next thing someone should focus on? Because you talked about the sacrifice as far as what you and your wife sacrifice and you things that you learned from Kirby as well. But what else is there that they can do? Because buying a multifamily, pro not a multifamily property, a multifamily or any property for that matter, is, is a very big undertaking. And it seems daunting when you're starting out. How would they handle that? Yeah, um, I would say people have to learn how to get out of their comfort zone. Um, it's it's not easy at all. Uh, Kirby and I just made a video recently on this, actually, and I was talking about how you kind of have to just force yourself. Um, there's no there's no like blueprint or way to go into um, a situation like that, but you you have to force yourself to do it and think of really just think of your future. If people would think about where they would want to be in their future right. uh, more often, I think they would take more risk. Um, but it, it's all necessary. It, you have to take risk. You have to take action. Uh, without it, you you won't get anywhere. And by the time you're old, you'll you have a lot of of uh, regrets. So let's let's that that with that said, let's talk about risk a little bit. As you're doing this, I've always thought you got to find ways to mitigate the risk. Find ways to put yourself in that small percentage where it's much more difficult for you to lose out everything. How do you go about mitigating the risk? What's your thought process on that? From are you asking me or? Oh, sorry, I forgot. There's two of y'all. My bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so used to interviewing one person, so interviewing two is new. But nonetheless, Alex, for you, how do you how would you go about mitigating that? So learning from Kirby, I don't think there's any mitigation. It's just jump right <laughs> in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I've got to say. Um, Having my wife on board is right. biggest help because um, my wife makes more, probably more sacrifices than I do. Um, so she's fully on board. I would say for someone that's single, especially if they're young, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, it should be very easy for them to take risk because they have, you know, they may have the responsibility of having a job, but 
um, if they don't have a wife or kids, um, you know, you can, you can go ahead and take that risk. When you have a family, um, I would say it's a little bit harder, but if someone is in a relationship and they're just married, no kids, um, I would encourage that married couple to take risks together. Um, and a lot more can be done if you're working as a team. Got it. Okay. Okay. So the old adage of together, everyone achieves more is kind of the, the way for this one then. Yeah. Yeah. I would okay. agree with that. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So for you, Kirby, you, as Alex is talking, he continues to talk about you as the coach. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought, and this has been my adage, right? Coaches have coaches. Uh, players have coaches. The greatest millionaires on this in this world have coaches in some areas of their life. How does one go about finding the right coach? Like, Alex, I know found you, kind of stumbled into you, but you've taken that role, from what I can tell, very well and, and pushed him forward in his own development. So how does somebody go and find a, a Kirby for themselves? Um, well, it's – it's not as hard as people think. Okay. The the key is, all right, so for me, for instance, I didn't have a per se coach. My coach was Dave Ramsey. You know, mm. my coach was find, finding people that were successful and follow the blueprint. I don't want to create a new blueprint and try to create my own. Why Got create it. my own when the people that's there before me that's already created it? So I didn't have any starting out. I didn't have any people that I knew that was wealthy or rich or anything like that. So I surrounded myself with, and it's going to sound boring. I sound, surrounded myself with books like the Robert Kiyosaki's, the, the, uh, Grant Cardone's, the rich dad, poor dad's, the richest man in Babylon's as a man thinking, those are the things that I, I just, you know, immerse myself in and I just followed their blueprint to the letter. I didn't try to go create my own, like, Oh, he said this way, but I'm going to do, put my little twist in there also right. in the book or the blueprint that they provided. It didn't say, put your own little twist in there. So if, if I knew what I was doing, I wouldn't sit, I wouldn't be sitting here broke reading their book if I knew what I was doing. So I, act, I act like, well, I didn't act like I knew I didn't know nothing. Right. I knew I didn't know nothing. So I went and took the knowledge of people that knew stuff and just took it on 100% and followed it to the letter. Okay. That's a, and, that's dope. You get the same result. Absolutely. Okay, so let's let's take Dave Ramsey out the picture, right? Okay. Give me your best person for someone to go and watch outside of pa the Passive Money Podcast, which for those listening and watching, I highly recommend the Passive Money Podcast. Um, but outside of you guys and Dave Ramsey, where would you tell someone to go get started to figure it out? Um. For me, it's for me is reading. I'm a I'm a big reader. Um, okay. But like Robert Kiyosaki, rich rich dad poor dad. A lot of people say they read the book. I always tell them to read it again if they're not taking action on it because Facts. it's a lot of things in there. Um. And then you uh you got Grant Cardone. I know some people think he's very abrasive. If you I'm always of the mindset of don't think of the messenger, think of the message. So if you listen to what he's saying mm -hmm. of how money works then it will give you a better understanding of how how the whole system in itself goes. But you, again, like I said, some people have some misgivings about his tone and stuff like that. Uh, even Dan Pena is another one. <laughs> but again, misgivings about his tone. But I don't look at the messenger. I just listen to the message and what they're trying to say. It's a lot of people that's out there wealthy. Uh, of course, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett been giving out a blueprint for 80 years. And everybody that's broker than him is trying to talk down on his blueprint, but I follow his blueprint also is that's, that's how I do it. And those are people that I would listen to just thinking off the top of my head right now. 